In this video, I'll take you through five myths about language learning that you probably do believe or at least fall into believing from time to time, and I'll explain how that works as we go. So even if you're an experienced language learner, these can be costing you time and energy and ultimately making your language learning experience less good <laughs> and more bad. Me speaks English, très bien, yet de bro. It's important to remember throughout the video so that I don't have to keep making this disclaimer, most of these seem obviously wrong. Like you're gonna hear them and go, yeah, I know that's not true, it's dumb. And you're gonna say it in exactly that tone too. But in my travels, I found that people will think and say that they know something isn't true, but their behavior indicates that they still think that it is true. None of these are just like incorrect facts that can be corrected with the right fact. They're like patterns of thinking, and for that reason, I'm not immune to these either. I find myself thinking some of these every so often. Now in this video, there are five of these, but of course there are more out there, so I will do another video to follow up on this one soon, kind of like a sequel to a really crap film. <laughs> Like, Taken 2, that's what the next video will be. It was like, we didn't need the first Taken, why do we get Taken 4? Try to keep better track of your daughter, you dumbass. So anyway, make sure you write, subscribe in the comments and send an email to the bell and do the things in the order that makes sense. Man who is some hast? out of it. The first myth is what I call training to play. It's the idea that the learning of the language is a necessity that will one day be finished and it's only then that you can enjoy the language by watching series and reading books and playing games etc. The reality is that you cannot and will not get good at a language that you don't spend real time with and that means consuming content in the language itself even at the stage that you don't really understand it. With this concept, if you're anything like me at least, you'll get it one day and then you'll just kind of forget it the next day. For example, this is the first book that I ever read in Swedish and that was almost three years ago, which kind of blows my mind because my Swedish sucked three years ago, but somehow I got through this book and I think I understood it. But even after I'd finished it and I was all proud that I'd read a whole book in Swedish, I didn't just pick up the next book and keep reading. I don't really know why. And it was more than a year later before I started watching stuff in Swedish without English subtitles because I kept falling for this myth that I wouldn't enjoy something if I didn't properly understand it. Now, I know that it's possible that you're thinking, what a book? Dude, I only know 19 words and five of them are conjugations of the verb to eat. If that's the case, then I'd point you to my mate Ollie Richards and his Uncovered courses. There's ones for Spanish, French, Italian and German. They're sort of an entertaining way to take your level from complete beginner to intermediate. They're built around reading and understanding stories and increasing your comprehension in a natural way. There's also videos and listening exercises. It's very cool stuff. So links for those are in the description. And yes, I do receive a commission if you use those. But this video is not sponsored by Story Learning. I was not told to say anything in particular. They have not even asked me to do this. In fact, I can call Ollie a posh pommy tosser who's probably worse at cricket than the rest of them, and that's pretty bad. What are you gonna do, Ollie? You're gonna fight me? You can't. I'm in a different country. Also, I think I'd win. <laughs> Take that, you scallywag! So just remember that you'll never feel ready to do anything that's actually going to push you. So don't train to play. Just start enjoying the language now. Myth number two goes a little something like this. If you want to get good at speaking, speak more. Thanks, Christian. The speak more myth is the idea that the language is in four or five different components that are kind of like separate lakes that have little or nothing to do with each other. And by extension, if you're a person who's interested in, as many people are, speaking the language well, and you don't really care about the other aspects, that you should spend all your time and energy on practicing speaking. A better analogy would be a complex network of rivers and streams that all kind of cross each other and go off on little tangents and meet back up and eventually all end up in the ocean that is your source for producing the language. See, the ability to speak a language well, fluently and articulately comes from an excellent understanding of the language, a feeling for the language that comes mostly from being exposed to it. I'm very familiar with the practice speaking by speaking more myth because that's what I did in Swedish. And often while I was having conversations, I had this feeling of like, yeah, I've got this under control. I know what's happening. I know what I'm saying. But as I later found out, I was often having a conversation that wasn't actually happening for real. It was just happening in my head. And when I watched those recordings, 
I realized that the teacher and I were kind of having a different conversation and I was also normally speaking really, really slowly without even realizing it because my subconscious competence in Swedish was so low that everything seemed to be happening faster than it really was. So when the teacher spoke slowly, that seemed normal to me. When they spoke at normal speed, that seemed sped up. So often I would take like five minutes to make a one minute point and think, yeah, nailed it. And by the way, this is around the same time that I kind of felt pretty fluent in Swedish when I had conversations, but when I tried to watch something in Swedish without subtitles, I'd be like, oh, they speak too fast and they use too many words that I don't know, and they're like, oh, this is too hard, turn the English subtitle. Yep, <laughs> you can't understand it because you haven't learned to understand Swedish yet, you dumbass. Don't mind me, just having a conversation with my past self. Doofus. The bottom line is this, learn to understand more, faster, more automatically, learn to read, read more, a lot more, write, write more and your speaking will get better. Yes, of course, speaking does improve with practice of that particular skill, but it's not a skill that exists in isolation. The other ones cannot be bypassed because good speech is the result of lots of exposure. Myth number three is that language is a cognitive ability. Knowledge. Now, yes, I did just say that enough exposure to the language will eventually lead towards spoken fluency. But that's not because you'll build up an impenetrable database of facts about the language. Rather, it's because you'll build up an automatic and inseparable association between the components of the language and their meanings. Have a listen to this extremely bland self-introduction. My name's Lamont. I'm from Australia, my favorite color is glue. So you almost certainly heard the mistake, except that you know it wasn't a mistake, it was put there deliberately, but even so, your brain probably corrected it without you even wanting it to. It just fired blue, blue, he should have said blue. Now, when you think about it, you don't know for a fact that I meant blue. I could have meant green or red, or I could have even meant glue, like I just love the color of glue when it's on your fingers and it's dried and it gets that translucent look and it's just like, Mwah. I mean, you can't do that though, you just... Nah. Wait, I need to go to hospital, I don't know. <laughs> My point is that assuming that you're a fluent speaker of a language, you've absorbed the language into your subconscious so deeply that you can't help but correct any mistake that you hear or see or whether it's something you say or someone else says, you'll automatically just know the right thing. That's the level that a truly fluent speaker is at and it doesn't come from learning facts about the language. It comes from being exposed to so much of the language that your brain does things without you needing to tell it to. It automatically turns words into meaning and meaning into words and this all just happens automatically. Learning words and grammar or facts about the language, that's an often necessary step but it's not the real fuel. The real fuel that actually propels you towards fluent and that kind of automation that I just showed you, that's exposure to the real language and its meaning. And this leads us beautifully into myth number four, which I call 30 minutes a day is enough work and enough play. I'm talking of course about the myth that you can learn a language in half an hour a day. Now for a lot of other things, this would be enough to get a bit of a grasp on it. For example, playing the piano. Really, to be good at playing the piano, you would need to practice a lot more than half an hour a day, but if you did those 30 minutes for two years, you might be okay after that time. There's a movie called The Legend of 1900 about a guy whose only purpose in life is playing the piano, and no surprise, he's better than everyone, by huge amounts. Because as good as those people may be, they're all humans who have learnt to play the piano. Whereas in the fable of this film, he's more like a piano who has taken the shape of a human. The problem for us as language learners is that these pianos in the form of humans, they exist. They're called native speakers. From birth to the age of about 12 or 13, their entire purpose is to work out what is going on around them. And what is going on around them is primarily their native language. Now at this point, some people would say, yeah, but I don't need to sound native. I just want to learn enough to communicate and have fun. And that's fine. I'm not trying to contribute to language elitism that says you have to sound absolutely perfect. I'm just pointing out that you yourself are actually a native speaker of something and whatever it is, your brain is programmed to continue doing that. So you need a lot more than half an hour a day with your target language 
just to tell your brain that priorities are different now. And that is before we've even talked about just how much time you're going to need to build up that subconscious knowledge that I talked about. If you're feeling guilty on this one, just try and do this for me. If you're currently doing half an hour, try to do an hour. If you're doing an hour, try to do 90 minutes. Whatever you're doing, try to add a half an hour, maybe even an hour more. And up to about eight hours a day, every hour you do is exponentially more useful. And the last myth is not so much a myth as it is an unhelpful attitude that people are just lured into. And I see this all the time. I call it the my target language is harder than yours syndrome. I think the reason this is so persistent is that one, it can almost always be framed to be true. And two, it strokes the ego. See, you can make the argument that any language is particularly difficult. For example, Swedish. It's known among language learners to be an easy one for English speakers. But I could if I wanted highlight certain aspects of it that are very tricky, or I could just play to the majority ignorance of Swedish. Most people don't know what it is, what it sounds like, anything. So I could play to that and say, oh yeah, it's really hard. And a lot of people like to do this because making their language sound difficult makes them feel good. But there are costs to this that I don't think are worth paying. Firstly, you're more likely to unconsciously avoid challenges the more and more challenging you make them in your brain. So let's say you've somehow worked up the courage to make a start on Mandarin. It's not helpful for you to spend the first year hearing about how fiendishly difficult Mandarin is, not from your friends, not from Chinese people, and certainly not from yourself. Because if you unconsciously think it's actually impossible, you're very unlikely to put in your hours every day. And the other problem is that as you reach the hard stages of any language, because they do all have their harder stages, then having spent time stroking your ego about how hard your language is and how awesome you are for learning it, is is just going to make any obstacle in your life tougher to overcome because the more you feed the ego the more feeding it requires until eventually you have to spend all your time and resources convincing yourself that you are awesome and you don't have any time left for anything else now obviously that would be taken to the extreme but we've all met people like this right people who obviously live in a fantasy about how great they are. And these people can never achieve anything. They can never learn a language because to do that would be to admit that there's something that they don't know anything about. So whether you're learning Swedish, Haitian Creole or Mongolian, try not to spend too much time thinking about how easy or hard your language is because that's not making you better at it. What's making you better at it is spending more time with it. So those were the five myths that I chose for this video. Leave me a comment letting me know which ones you'd like me to cover in the follow up video. And until then, have a good day or night and I will see you later. Watch this. Oh, yeah, moody. Let me know if you want me to do a whole video like this. Okay, bye.